Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and Assalamu alaikum. The title of my talk is Brain Computer Interface Feature Extraction and Classification of Motor Imagery Based Cognitive Tasks. I am Humaira Nisar from University Tunggu Abdur Rahman, Malaysia. First of all, I will introduce the topic and then we will go to the literature review. Uh, we will um, look at the research methodology, discuss the results, and finally, I will conclude this uh, talk. Brain computer interface is basically a system that allows a direct communication between the human brain and a BCI device. Um, the input to the system is, are the EEG signals, whereas the output to the system are the commands that control um, the external devices based on the user, uh, uh, the participant or the user, or you can say this, uh, um, the subject's uh, um, e intention. A comprehensive literature review, review of the topic shows that uh, lots of researchers have been working on this um, uh, the classification of the motor imagery tasks uh, using the left and right hand uh, uh, motor imagery task. And then um, uh, different researchers use different number of electrodes, uh, different feature extraction um, methods and different classifiers. Um, the best classification accuracy that we have just yet seen is uh, around 99.87%, which has been uh, reported by Nisar et al. And uh, it uses um, 14 electrodes with the uh, uh, approximate entropy as the, as the feature and the SVM as the classifier. Based on uh, the literature review, we have observed that different papers use different data sets and different number of electrodes, hence it is difficult to benchmark the uh, research. And it is also observed that instead of using um, the, the total or uh, all electrodes on the headset, we can also reduce the number of electrodes uh, so that we can use also instead of the high density EEG devices, we can use consumer grade low density EEG devices. And um, hence, in this paper, our objective is to propose a framework, framework to classify a motor imagery tasks using a public data set. The data set used for this work was created by Schalk et al. in 2004, and it was contributed to the PhysioNet MI database available at this uh, location. Uh, the EG device was used was uh, uh, was. Uh, from um, EEG BCI 2000 system. Uh, it has 64 channels with a sampling speed of 160 samples per second. The EEG recordings were made from 109 participants, but in this work, we have used data from 50 participants. Each participant had 14 experimental runs, um, two baseline and four, uh, um, four tasks, two real and two imaginary. Okay, so uh, the two minute runs for different imagery, motor imagery tasks were as follows. You can see that the cue appears on the left hand side of the screen and the subject imagines the opening and closing of the corresponding fist until the cue vanishes. Okay, and then the second task is the cue appears on the top and the bottom of the screen and the subject imagines the opening and closing of either both fists or if the queue is located on the top and the both feet if the queue is located at the bottom. The simulation is done in, on a PC um, with Intel 5 core. Um, and we, for software analysis, we have used MATLAB, EEG Lab and Anaconda Spider. The first step is pre-processing, which involves artifact removal and frequency filtering. Uh, we don't need artifact removal for this specific data set because the, the data is already clean. Uh, whereas uh, for the frequency fil filtering, we use a bandpass filter uh, of 0.5 to 30 hertz range. Um, is uh, important. Uh, so we have seen that the length of each EG signal is two minutes, which is equal to 120 seconds. Uh, each epoch is extracted from minus 1.5 to 2.5 seconds, making it four seconds long. Hence, we have 30 epochs. Then we have, uh, uh, but there are only 15 epochs for the motor imagery task. Since the task is repeated, we have three experimental runs. So we have a total of 15 into 345 tasks. 
Um, out of these 45 tasks, 25 are for the 22 are for the left and 23 for the right task. Uh, and then um, we can also use um, um, the, we can also overlap the epochs. So this is the formula for overlapping epochs. We have used zero overlapping, 50% and 80% overlapping, which makes uh, 45 epochs, 80, 88 epochs, and 217 epochs. We have used five features. The first feature is uh, that, that we calculated is the band power of uh, um, delta, theta, alpha, and beta bands is the approximate entropy. And the third feature is statistical features. We have uh, calculated six uh, statistical features, which are given uh, as follows. The fourth feature that we have calculated is the, are the wavelet-based features, which include the book B4 wavelet, and the features are mean, standard deviation, and energy of beta and alpha bands. And finally, the common spatial pattern feature has also been um, calculated. For the purpose of classification, we have used the 10-fold cross-validation cross procedure, and we have used five classification methods, which are decision-free, random forest, support vector machine, care nearest neighbors and artificial neural network. For performance evaluation, we have used um, the metric of accuracy, uh, which is equal to true positive plus true negative divided by true positive false uh, plus false positive plus false negative plus true negative. The details are given over here. Now we will move to the results in discussion. First of all, we will look at the, the time to extract different features. We, as we see that as we increase the overlapping ratio, the time to extract features is increased. And um, um, for one subject, it takes almost 30 seconds um, to calculate statistical features, which is the fastest. Accuracies for different overlapping ratios for the left hand and versus right hand. Um, if, if we try to look at different overlapping ratios for uh, approximate entropy and statistical features, we can see that the best result is obtained by the um, approximate entropy with 98.53% accuracy with SPM as the classifier. And the second best result is by the um, statistical features with 0.8% overlapping ratio and the accuracy is 91.5 percent using SVM classifier. The similar trend has been observed when we calculate the classification accuracies for uh, uh, both fists and both feet. We see that the highest accuracy is obtained by the approximate entropy classifier with the uh, approximate entropy feature with 0.8 overlapping ratio and SVM classifier giving an accuracy of 98.4%, whereas the second uh, highest accuracy is by the statistical classifier uh, features with 90.28% accuracy. Finally, if we see the classification accuracies for the left uh, versus right hand, um, uh, we see that uh, approximate entropy feature gives the highest accuracy with SVM classifier equal to 98.53% and the second in line is the statistical features. The same trend has been observed in, in the case of classification accuracies for both fist and both uh, feed where we see that the highest accuracy is uh, obtained by approximate entropy feature with SVM classifier which is equal to 98.4% and the second highest accuracy is by statistical features. In order to further improve the accuracy, we try to combine the features. So we have combined um, the features with different combinations, but we see that um, uh, we, we have somehow improved the classification accuracies above statistical features, but still it cannot reach um, that of the approximate entropy features. So here we have obtained the highest accuracy with approximate entropy and statistical features, which is around 95.76 for SVM classifier. And uh, for the fist and feet case, again, uh, we, uh, the same features has obtained the highest um, accuracy, but with the A and N classifier. And both accuracies are around 95%. But here it should be noted that these accuracies are less than the um, a single approximate entropy classifier, but higher than the statistical classifier. 
And finally, we will we will like to uh, compare our results with um, with uh, some of the um, papers that have been uh, quoted in the literature. So. Uh, which have used the same data set, the same number of electrodes, the wave CSP, which uses uh, um, SVM classifier and KNN classifier, getting an uh, accuracy of around 63.4%, whereas our proposed algorithm, when it uses the CSP, it gives uh, with SVM classifier an accuracy of only 57.59%. Whereas if we look at, um, at the paper, uh, uh, um, proposed by Sun et al. We see that with the PSD feature and SVM classifier, they have a 65% accuracy. Whereas in our proposed method, if we use a bandpass feature with SVM classifier, we use a slightly lower accuracy of 61.34%. However, in our proposed work, when we use the approximate entropy classifier, we get a very high accuracy with SVM um, SVM uh, classifier, which is equal to 98.53%. And with the statistical features with SVM classifier, we get an accuracy of 99.5%. And here, why we have we are mentioning a lower um, accuracy uh, when we are compared to the 98.5%, all those statistical features has a lower accuracy, but we see that uh, the time to compute the statistical features is much, much faster than the approximate entropy. So if, if uh, our application is time dependent, then of course it is better to use the statistical um, uh, features for um, um, uh, statistical features for classification. Hence, we can conclude that the information present in the motor imagery signals can be used for classification of uh, signals for uh, BCI applications. Um, it is noted that the combination of features may improve the cross-validation accuracy. The highest accuracy obtained is with the approximate entropy uh, feature with 64 electrodes and SVM classifier, which is equal to 98.53%. It is also concluded that the classification accuracies obtained for the both fist and feet motor imagery tasks are slightly higher than the both left and right hand motor imagery task. In the future, uh, it is recommended that we should try to um, implement this system in real time um, using the consumer grade EEG devices. And um, we will also try to reduce the number of sensors so that um, um, uh, we, we can, uh, we will be able to um, classify the signal uh, at a faster pace. So these are the references used in this talk and um, presentation. If you have any question, you can drop me an email at humera at utah.edu.my.